PVP to appeal ruling on GCOM chairman. Sign boards unveil in honor of Clive Lloyd. Contraband found at Luzignan prison. And in court, Shyam Wazim Nizam remanded to prison for inciting public terror. Those are the top headlines for Monday, June 11. Good evening, I'm Ashley Scotland with the news and details. The opposition People's Progressive Party will be moving to the Caribbean Court of Justice to appeal the High Court's ruling against President David Granger's unilateral appointment of Justice James Patterson as head of the Ghana Elections Commissions. Here is more from Sandy Ramadan. The opposition People's Progressive Party will be appealing the High Court's ruling against President David Granger's unilateral appointment of Justice James Patterson as head of the Ghana Elections Commission. The matter was filed by PVP Executive Secretary Zulfika Mustafa, challenging the constitutionality of the appointment of retired Justice James Patterson as the chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission. The PPP in a statement said the decision will destroy the delicate balance the chairman is intended to bring to the commission. The party maintains that the chairman should be appointed through a mechanism which involves an input from both the president and the leader of the opposition to ultimately produce a person who enjoys the confidence of both. The party said they'll be filing an appeal to challenge this decision in order to secure constitutional compliance. The PPP said that they are prepared to go to the Caribbean Court of Justice if the situation so demands to reverse what the party considers an erosion of constitutional and electoral democracy. Sandy Ramutar, from TV's News Update. More news still ahead. Do stay tuned. Optic Vision Care, we value the power of your sight. And with our team of eye care professionals, you'll be in good hands. Come experience our comprehensive eye examination using state-of-the-art technology and specialized diagnostic equipment at four convenient locations. In Mahaika, Grove, Giftland Mall, and East Street. At Optic, we care, you see. Call us today, 227-7744. The best quality for you are the Slim Jet because you deserve the best. The Slim Jet introducing the latest butt lifters. This one makes pressure in the abdomen and adds the butt. You can wear any kind of cloth and nobody knows that you have something under. We also introduce the butt lifter with hooks. It's easy for you to wear and you can, you can adjust in different positions. Only at the Slim Jet in City Mall or Gibbland Mall. BB is where you're going with so much Windex for clean windows. All them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi, girl, mind your own business. I got big plans. But, BB, your house don't even have windows. Eh, hey, girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got window? Yes, I know it ain't got window. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home at Eccles. It named Beeson. Like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind new business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors. Serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Champion whole wheat chow mein. It's 100% whole wheat. That's why it's my number one choice. As a mom, you want your kids to eat healthy. At any age, eating healthy is not an option. It's a must.
You're still with news update. Welcome back. Serious crimes have been decreased by 7% at the end of May 2018. Also, fatal accidents are on the decline according to the Guyana Police Force. Here are the details. As of May 2018, the Guyana Police Force has recorded a 7% decrease in serious crimes relative to the same period last year. Statistics revealed by the force saw a 23% decrease in murder, an 8% increase in robberies where no instruments were used, and a 7% increase in robbery on the arms where firearms were used. In addition to this, robbery on the arms where instruments other than firearms were used has been decreased by 28%. Robbery with violence saw a 15% decrease. The force also recorded a 33% decrease in robbery with aggravation, a 34% decrease in larceny from the person, a 4% increase in rape, a 3% increase in burglary, and a 4% decrease in break and enter and larceny. Coupled with this, 55 illegal firearms have been seized for the year when compared to 64 for the corresponding period last year. There were 33 pistols, 12 revolver, 7 shotgun, 1 submachine and 2 rifles. A division led with 27 seizures followed by F division. Divisions B and C seized 6 each along with divisions E and G with 2 each. Division D had one seizure of an illegal weapon. On traffic management, the police have recorded a 7.3% decrease in fatal accidents at the end of May. The force noted too that serious, minor and damaged accidents have also decreased by 9%, 32% and 7.2% respectively. Pedestrians remain the leading category of road users being killed on the country's roadways, 16 being recorded. Occupants of car was 10, pedal cyclists 8, motorcyclists 5, passenger in minibus and driver were 2, respectively. One pillion rider was also recorded among the country's road fatalities, which left a total of 44 persons dead at the end of May 2018. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Even though two prison officers were caught smuggling prohibited items into the prison, the trade of contraband is trying to make its way again into the Lusignan prison. Nikhil John reports. The Joint Services were called in this morning at the Lusignan prison to investigate what appeared to be contraband in three bags. Reports are that security personnel at the facility heard crashing songs emanating from the bushes and shortly after observed a male. The security at the prison said the person was wearing what appears to be a hoodie. A warning shot was fired. However, the individual fled back into the thick vegetation. A search was conducted in the area and three bags were found. A further search unearthed 140 packets of cigarettes, four cellular phones, 11 lighters, one power pack, one earpiece, a phone charger, 15 packets of small size Ziploc bags and 1,794 grams of cannabis. The items found were lodged with the police as investigations are ongoing. Only last month, two prison officers were intercepted with contraband on the east coast of the Marara during a sting operation. The two officers were found with a pound of compressed marijuana in their possession. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. In honor of former West Indies captain Clive Lloyd, the Demerara Cricket Club unveiled two signboards depicting traffic sign signals at the Kitty Roundabout environs. Lashana Gomes Cornelius tells us more. The Ministry of Public Infrastructure, in collaboration with the Demerara Cricket Club on June 11, unveiled two road signs in honor of famous Guyanese former West Indian cricketer Clive Lloyd. Mayor of Georgetown, Patricia Chase Green, urged the public to be cognizant of the regulations when using the roadways, especially at the roundabout. Noting that persons are guilty of damaging road signs, Chase Green warned against the display of such behavior on the roadways and in communities. 
But as we reflect on Clive Lloyd, one of our cricketing heroes among many, and we erecting this sign this morning, I hope that the sign that goes up will be properly maintained. I'm happy that we have partnership with the Ministry of Public Infrastructure and the private sector in doing these projects. But the problem of maintenance, as mayor of the city of Georgetown, for me, every taxi driver, minibus driver, the drive and destroy these signs should be communicated to us so a cost could be attached for them to do the repairs. It is unfair for people to destroy public property and not pay for it. But we need to have the cooperation of everyone to have these things done. President of the Demerara Cricket Club, former West Indies cricketer Roger Harper, reflected on the life achievements of Clive Lloyd. He won 14 series and lost just two. He led the West Indies team in 84 One Day Internationals, won 64 of them including two World Cup trophies in 1975 and 1979. On the back of Clive Lloyd's leadership, the West Indies cricket team became one of the greatest sporting dynasties, one that lasted in excess of 15 years. After retiring as a player, while still at the very top of his game in 1985, and I think in the last tour he played the top the West Indies batting averages. He fulfilled several roles within the game of cricket, including West Indies coach, West Indies manager, WICB director, ICC match referee, and WICB selection chairman. Lloyd captained the West Indies between 1974 and 1985 and oversaw their rise to become the dominant test-playing nation, a position that was only relinquished in the latter half of the 1990s. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. When we return, government under pressure to review cybercrime bill. Stay tuned. The secret is out. Tayo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. Electrical and household appliances. Clothing. Cell phones and accessories. And much, much more. Oh my God, so much in this store. Pio's Future Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit? No, me know the secret. I like all you know the secret. Everybody know the secret. <laughs> Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Mark? I'm in the kitchen. Make an impression with the finest styles imported by Lens. Lens has a huge selection of various styles for your wall, floor, and pool needs. All of our towels are of grade A quality, which are the highest quality tile rated. 
That means they last longer and are less likely to damage or crack. We're the sole distributor for many reputable companies around the world. At Lens, we have special deals for contractors and bulk shoppers. Shop at any of our three locations to get the best in towns. Lens, our product, your creation. Having trouble with your vehicle and can't seem to find your spare parts? Then check out Caribbean Motor Spurs at 174 Zealot Public Road North, East Bank, Essequibo. We stock brands such as Tenacity, Johnson Products, JHF Filters, Coolmax Radiators with Warranty, and so much more. We also do orders for hard-to-find auto parts, so don't hesitate. Come in and meet our experienced and knowledgeable staff or call us on 609-7621 or 630-4394. Looking for fresh meals, tasty pastries and bread? Then visit Pam and Steve Bakery at 127 4th Street in Stone Avenue, Campbellville. Come and enjoy our daily breakfast and lunch specials. Choose from our wide variety of delightful meals. For the Christmas holidays, place your order for our black sponge and fruitcakes. Be sure to drop by for our Sunday breakfast special, pepper pot and more opens every day except holidays. So next time you're in town, remember to visit Pam and Steve Bakery or call us on 226-5338. Eight persons graduated today from a three-month training program which will see them working at the Diagnostic Center to stimulate the development of persons with special education needs associated with disabilities at the Cyril Potter College of Education come September. Yanis Abrams with the details. Today saw eight persons graduating from a three-month training program which equipped them with the requisite skills to work at the center to stimulate the development for children, adolescents, and youth with special education needs. The center will be located in the compound of the Cyril Potter College of Education. The Ministry of Education, in collaboration with the Cuban Embassy, held a graduation ceremony for a trainees. Minister of Education Nicolette Henry says the center will facilitate training for the management of persons with disabilities. This, the Center for Stimulation is also represented, represented in the laws of Guyana, in particular Chapter 3901, which speaks to inclusion and also our regional inclusion policy, in that both documents outline the need to have students officially and comprehensively assess. So developing an individualized education plan is pivotal to this inclusion process. Our eight students graduating here today, and they will no longer be students after today, are now equipped with the skills to create individuals who can achieve their full potential for Guyana. I thank you in advance for your service to your respective communities and beyond. With your work, your students are given the opportunity to reach higher against all the odds and to shine as individuals without barriers and obviously to be an inspiration to all of us. The facility is a collaborative effort between the Ministry of Public Health, the Caribbean Community, CARICOM, and the Cuban government. In December 2016, a tripartite cooperation and technical assistance agreement were signed between the three parties to establish the center, which will provide training for individuals who will provide service to persons living with disabilities. The training includes evaluation and diagnosis, language therapy, occupational therapy, psychological treatment, prevention, rehabilitation, and social integration services. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. The Ministry of Natural Resources has pledged their commitment to treatment for workers who were affected by the emission of mercury at the Guyana Gold Board. Kipani Jordan reports. Chief Medical Officer Shamdio Prasad says a number of tests were carried out on employees which showed high mercury levels. There are persons who 
in many, many environments. Once you, the thing with mercury is that it's present in the soil. Once you start taking apart the soil and so on, it releases mercury. As a matter of fact, in some of our early work in 2008, we found that the mercury levels in some persons were even higher who are not workers, all right? Like in Masukunari and so on. And it depends a lot on their diet because mercury gets trapped in the food chain, all right? So what has happened here, I think, is an advancement on the decision made by the two ministers and government for us to advance the, um, the involvement. We have PAHO support in terms of identifying someone to come in and help to advise us a little bit more in depth on the, um, the safety of the premises, the measures in place for the protocols for managing persons who have elevated levels of mercury. So that's what we're working on. While there are doctors trained to manage the level of mercury in the body, there are no specialists in Guyana to diagnose and treat mercury levels, explained Prasad. Close to 100 employees of the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission and the Guyana Gold Board have been affected by the mercury emission. The cause of the emission was as a result of a technical mishap with the chimney at the smelting room at the Guyana Gold Board. As such, the Pan American Health Organization has taken up the mantle to lead the investigation for the presence of mercury at the Guyana Gold Board. Subsequently, the smelting of gold was halted and a private contractor was employed by the Gold Board to conduct the process. Kippany Journal reporting for MTV's News Update. While the government has not made clear their decision on the draft cybercrime bill, the bill has been put forward to Cabinet for consideration. Nikhil Jondu has more. The cybercrime bill has been brought before Cabinet for consideration. Minister of State Joseph Harmon says the draft bill will be deliberated on by all government members of Parliament. However, a time and date for discussions has not been set. Attorney General Basil Williams had stated that the cybercrime bill is necessary given that the past administration used a part of the previous legislation to charge dissidents. He also stated that critics have left out Clause 23 in the bill. The Attorney General said Clause 23 talks about an individual who breaks the law through the use of a computer system and can be charged and penalized for their action or actions. Pressure from local and foreign journalists have been mounting on the government to review the impending draconian measures in the draft legislation. Reporters Without Borders is urging the government to amend the draft cybercrime bill. The non-governmental organization believes that, while the government has a legitimate interest in regulating the internet, they are concerned with several provisions in the bill. The group believes that the proposed legislation could have deterrent effects on journalists' reporting. The NGO also stated that Section 9 of the bill criminalizes anyone obtaining data that are not authorized for usage regardless whether the data was obtained in an authorized way from the sender. The group believes this poses a threat to press freedom if used to penalize journalists for publishing information from confidential sources. The NGO also added that Section 18 allowed the state to prosecute online speech they believe to excite this affection towards the government. That could also create a significant liability for journalists publishing articles that may be deemed critical of the state. The NGO also noted that Section 37 gives broad authority to judges to remove or disable access to user-generated content hosted or stored on their services. In addition, Section 38 authorizes the use of remote forensic tools to intercept private data. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Still ahead, City Hall to formulate policy for rehabilitation works. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. 
You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. Did you know almost one-third of deaths in Guyana are heart-related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol-clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Here's what's happening on Waterloo Street at John Lewis Styles during the month of June. Shop for Father's Day and you could win an all-inclusive trip for two to Arrowpoint Nature Resort. Buy any men's suit and get a free tie. Or buy any men's pair of shoes and get a free pair of socks. Traveling this summer? Buy any luggage set and get a free travel pouch. Visit us on Waterloo Street for more choices and better prices. John Lewis Styles. Simply different. What good is history if you never change? And what good is change if it doesn't make you better? At Valvoline, for the last 150 years, we've been doing just that. Relentlessly pursuing innovation for your engine. Backed up not just by science, but by the hands-on expertise that drives everything we do. Valvoline, 150 years under the hood. Champion whole wheat chow mein. It's 100% whole wheat. That's why it's my number one choice. As a mom, you want your kids to eat healthy. At any age, eating healthy is not an option. It's a must. This is MTV News Update. Thank you for staying tuned. To ensure the issue of timely insurance payments is resolved, the City Council is in steady contact with the National Insurance Scheme to ensure the matter is rectified. Here are the details. Deputy Town Clerk Sharon Harry says the Council has been making contributions on behalf of its employees to the National Insurance Scheme. However, payments have not been up to date. On a positive note, the Council is in constant contact with the insurance company to ensure the issue is resolved at the soonest. I know that I've been working with NIA so that we can resolve that issue so that when we first go to them, they may be able to honor what the case is taking to them. And um, we're in the process of working on a certain that um, quite soon they will be able to access that situation. So it is something that we are addressing and I'm working along with the personnel at NIS to ensure it is not our own thing, at least our weekly employees, those are being taken care of. The council is set to owe the National Insurance Scheme the sum of $124 million in fees for the employees' insurance. Treasurer of the council, Ron McCallman, had made this announcement in February. In addition to this, the council has not been contributing sums for credit union dues and pay as you earn. The city council has overtime cried out for being cash strapped. Tom Clark Royston King even proposed to have some of its staff retrenched. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. City Hall is expected to formulate a policy to cater for rehabilitation works for the 26 constituencies across Georgetown. Lashana Gomes Cornelius tells us more. Mayor Patricia Chase Green stressed the need for more collaborative effort between the City Council and the Traffic Department. A more robust partnership, she says, will pave the way for better enforcement of traffic rules and regulations. Well, presently, as far as I'm aware, there are no laws. But what we need to do is have a collaboration of agencies working together. Because say, for instance, you have just erected a sign. 
next month or two, some reckless driver comes and hits it down and he goes his way. I mean, it's a loss to the private company that would have expended monies to do it and efforts and everything from other agencies who work together. If you drive around the city of Georgia, you've seen a lot of bridges where cars would have, or minibuses would have, trucks or whatever, would have damages just went their way. What I'm saying at the level of the council or maybe the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, that they should have some collaboration with the traffic department so when these vehicles are involved in these accidents it damages public um, property like bridges and signboards that we put up at cost should be attached to it uh, they should pay for the repairs of those things because it's not fair for the council to be repairing a bridge ever so often go down south road and you would see those bridges ha all of them were damaged by accidents. Green says the council is actively working along with all constituencies to ensure rehabilitation works for drains and bridges are realized. She said a number of constituencies have already been identified for rehabilitation works. In addition to this, a policy will be formulated to determine the allocation of expenditure for rehabilitation works across constituencies. In our 2018 budget, $5 million was allotted to every constituency for works to be done in those constituencies. The Ministry of Communities have released $57 million, $600 and something thousand dollars for works to be done presently in 12 constituencies who would have submitted project documents and were approved by the Ministry. That money is expected to be released to the, to the Mayor and City Council. So those contractors who were in arrangements with the constituency represented because we did it in consultation with the residents of each community during our budget pres um, preparation. So we're hoping that sometime in this month works will start. We have already met last Saturday as a council to determine a policy in how the money will be expended and how it will be released in phases for the works that will be done. Most of it was to be, would have been for street lights, um, drainage and irrigation, skill training for some communities and so. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashawna Gomes, Cornelius. The City Council is expected to formulate another policy for the reviewing of staff positions, a call made by Tom Clark Royston King at the Council's statutory meeting on June 11. Yanis Abrams with the details. Tom Clark Royston King has announced that a document will be formulated to finalize the reviewing of employees' position at the Council. King's position was announced on June 11 at the City Council's statutory meeting. Begging to differ was Mayor Patricia Chase Green, who sees the policy as a demoting factor for the Council's employees. For the past 20 or 25 years, I'm just using years of service, and because of that, I would have been elevated because we have some of those cases where persons are acting beyond the normal time and then eventually they're appointed but they weren't fully qualified. How do you reduce cost? Because even you can demote me, you have a right to demote me, but you can't touch my salary. I think those are the labor laws. So in demoting me from being, I don't want to use any position for anybody to feel I'm, I'm going after them. But from removing me from a senior position because I don't have all of the qualifications and, and demoting me to maybe where I'm qualified as a clerk three or a clerk two. How do you touch my salary according to the union laws? How do you do that? Your Worship, there's a difference between reassigning and demoting. People can be reassigned without being demoted. But you're not, you're not reducing the cost? You're resigning me from being a senior officer to a junior officer with a large salary. If you, if you have internal workings, internal controls, if you look at it internally, you can reduce costs. If you, if you are more competent to perform another task and you're more efficient, you can actually reduce the cost. It's not about, it's really not about demoting people. It is about redeploying and reassigning people. King pointed out that the purpose of the policy is to see the reduction of costs at the council. Your Worship, you have to be reassigned at the same level, but in a different department to perform a different assignment. So your emoluments will not be affected. 
your remuneration will not be affected. So it has nothing to do with the motion or looking at people's salary with a view to reducing salary. It has to do with time, competencies, your ability to perform particular and special assignments in specialized areas. This is what we're talking about. The town clerk explained that the staff would be reassigned to different departments if they are not qualified in the current position they hold. But there are a number of ways in which you can actually reduce costs by reassigning staff. And I can give you a simple one. If a staff is not particularly qualified in an area, they will take more time and it will cost more money. If you examine the, 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 the department or the section and the staff is suitable for a more for another area, another section, and that staff is reassigned and they're able to do the work, then that will reduce time and that will reduce cost. This is part of the many initiatives taken by the council to rake in revenues for the council, which has over time been cash strapped. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. With a drive to promote a healthy environment, Saul Guyan, in partnership with the Environment Protection Agency, convened a beach cleanup day on June 9. Lashana Gomes Cornelius reports. The exercise was geared towards encouraging the public on the significance of oceans and their protection. Best practices in waste disposal, particularly plastic waste, were also emphasized. Also throwing their support behind the promotion was the Environmental Protection Agency and the Department of Environment. The agencies aided support in formulating green initiatives with the hope of promoting a healthier environment. General Manager of Seoul Guyana Incorporated, Liz Wyatt, says the exercise was facilitated to promote a healthy and a safe environment. And we are always working with the EPA to make sure that in our depots we are safe and that there aren't any spills, making sure our contingency plans are there. But what today is about is giving back to the community, making sure that the community has a green space that they can enjoy. So um, part of our philosophy of course is health, safety and the environment and of course this is what we're doing here today is helping clean up the environment and keeping Guyana green. Plastic pollution is known globally as a major detriment to the protection of the environment especially to marine life. According to the United Nations Joint Group of Experts on the Scientific Aspects of Marine Pollution, it is estimated that land-based sources account for up to 80% of the world's marine population, 60 to 95% of the waste being plastic waste. Reporting from TV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Stay tuned for regional and international news court roundup as well as the Guyana Stock Exchange. Gafu's proudly presents the perfect block made by the most technologically advanced concrete block making machine in sizes 4 and 6 inches. Perfect because it's the right ratio of cement and sand with sifting added for greater strength. It's stress tested independently by the UG Civil Engineering Department and it's cured for longer life. It's now available at a lower price with a 12.5% discount. The perfect block from Gafu's setting a new benchmark. Hey, you have a growing flesh there, and there too, and there is another one. Those ugly and annoying growing flesh, like a plague, ignoring them, and before you know, you have them everywhere. A Slimjet presenting Coliomac, the most effective growing flesh and wall remover. Painlessly remove ugly growing flesh is the quick and effective way. Get soft, smooth, growing flesh-free skin, guarantee. Just apply Colomac twice a day and the growing flesh just dry up and fall off. Easy, quick and painless. It stop suffering and feeling embarrassed. Remove those ugly growing flesh with Colomac. Only at the Slim Jet, City Mall, second floor. With enhanced vision, your eyes become the windows to the world. Appreciating moments as you capture life in every image, creating memories and discovering the beauty around us. See, do and enjoy any occasion of life in style with superior lens technology from De Silva's Optical. With transitions, Crizal 
and Verilux lenses, you'll find the perfect fit for you. De Silva's Optical South Road. Look better, see better. Introducing the new Softex toilet tissue, now available across Guyana. Softex is silky smooth because it's made from virgin pulp. Softex is soft and gentle to every touch. Even babies can use it. Manufactured and distributed by BPATS Paper Manufacturing, Eccles Industrial Site. The choice is clear. Two Softex toilet tissue, super soft and super durable, guaranteed. what went down at the Georgia Magistrates Court on Monday, June 11. A 23-year-old man was today remanded to prison by Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan for inciting public terror after he made a post on Facebook threatening to bomb all of the stores in Guyana. Shyam Wazim Nizam denied that between June 1, 2018 and June 3, 2018 at Perica, East Bank Esequibo, with intent to cause public terror, he wrote on his Facebook post, Esequibo belongs to Venezuela. I will bomb all the stores of your country one by one. Nizam, a laborer of Perica Bagdam, East Bank Esequibo was unrepresented by an attorney. Police prosecutor Gordon Mansfield objected to Nizam being released on bail, citing the seriousness of the charge. The chief magistrate remanded Nizam to jail on the ground of public safety. The matter is transferred to the Leonora Magistrates Court for June 26. In another matter, a little over a year after being on the run from the law, a 23-year-old minor was today finally arrested and brought before the Georgetown Magistrates Court and charged with attempted murder. Hemchand Kenswin appeared before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan at the Georgetown Magistrates Court and was not required to plead to the charge. Particulars of the charge alleged that on April 14, 2017, at Durban Backlands, Georgetown, with intent to commit murder, he wounded Trevor Smith. Police prosecutor Gordon Mansfield told the court that Kenswin was recently arrested by the police after fleeing to the interior after committing the crime. Mansfield further told the court that on April 14, 2017, both parties had an exchange of words because Kenswin was sitting on Smith's front step and refused to remove. Smith became annoyed and reported the matter to the nearby police station. However, upon his return, he was confronted by Kenswin, who dealt him several lashes to his head with a piece of wood. The prosecutor noted that Smith was hospitalized for over five days. Mansfield objected to bail being granted to the accused on the grounds that he is a flight risk. The magistrate ruled in the prosecution's favor and remanded Kenswin to prison until June 18. And finally, a 22-year-old real estate agent was charged before Principal Magistrate Judy Latchman at the Georgetown Magistrates Court for obtaining money under false pretense. Basdeo Prasad denied the charge when it was read to him and was released on $100,000 bail after police prosecutor Arvin Moore made no objection to bail being granted. It is alleged that on April 10, 2018, at Georgetown, with intent to defraud, he obtained from Anurada Prasad $100,000 by falsely pretending that he was in a position to obtain a plot of land knowing seemed to be false. Moore told the court that the virtual complainant went into the defendant's real estate office to buy a plot of land. The defendant told the woman to make a down payment of $100,000 for the plot of land. The man further told the woman that she had to pay a balance of $350,000. However, when the woman was ready to build on the land, she was told that the land was not sold to anyone. 
The magistrate released Prasad on $100,000 bail and adjourned the matter until June 25. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. The Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 777. Let's turn our attention to the Demerara Harbour Bridge schedule. That's all we have for you in our newscast tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. PPP to appeal ruling on GCOM chairman. Sign boards unveil in honor of Clive Lloyd. Contraband found at Lusignan prison. And in court, Shyam Wazim Nizam remanded to prison for inciting public terror. Remember to join us online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours 30 on Tuesday, June 12th. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I'm Ashley Scotland. Thank you for watching. Good night.